Hey, it's Beth. Todd and I have chosen to grow our large family through adoption and foster care and biological children. And our most recent adoption a couple of years ago was of a 12 year old Mexican boy. And it took about a year and a half from when we identified him as being a part of our family to when he actually got to come home. During that year and a half, the Mexican government agreed for us to have Skype dates with him a couple times a week so we could begin to facilitate attachment as quickly as possible. And most of those Skype dates were basically conversations about soccer and the weather or whatever had happened in our day that day. But about halfway through that year and a half, we got on the phone one night and I could tell he was really sad. I didn't know at first why, but then he told me that he had been moved from an eight to an 11 year old dorm into a 12 to 18 year old dorm. And that's a scary place. That's a big adjustment for someone to make. And I didn't wanna get off the phone with him. And before we hung up, I said, listen, here's what I wanna tell you. When I get big feelings, like I can tell you're having some big feelings. My big feelings might be anger or sadness or fear. I just remind myself what I know for sure to be true. I said, what do you know for sure to be true? And he confessed nothing. I don't know anything for sure to be true. I knew the adoption was progressing. We were getting things translated and approved, but for him every day looked the same. I said, okay, well, I'll tell you what I know for sure to be true and you can have it. I know for sure that you're our son and that we're coming for you. I don't care who hasn't figured it out yet. And for sure, I know that God has a plan and you may not understand it or like it, but you can trust it. Like, tell me that. So he repeated back to me in his 12 year old enthusiastic voice, I'm your son and you're coming for me and God has a plan and I can trust it. I'm like, don't we feel better already? And that became then the way that we signed off the next nine months. Whenever we finished our conversation, we, we closed out by saying he was our son and that we were coming for him and that God had a plan that we could trust. 18 months later, we finally found ourselves in that courtroom and it was time for us to, to finalize all that we had been working on. We were all very excited and we go into the courtroom and then he got emotionally triggered because courtrooms are places that he had watched families fall apart and not come together. But we kind of ignored the fact that he was triggering and we kept testifying and social workers and psychologists and attorneys and Todd and I all said what we had to say. But in Mexican law, if you're over the age of 12 and you're gonna leave your country, you have to testify in your voice in open court that it's what you want. So the judge called on him to give his testimony and he, had, he couldn't talk, he, he, was, he was hurting. And so we were rubbing his back on either side of him and encouraging him to share. It, it got really quiet and kind of uncomfortable and I'm telling the judge like, what are our options? Can he write it down? Can he go with you in your chambers? Can we clear some people out? He said, I'm sorry, that's the law. These people, this room, his voice. So we just sat there for a few more minutes until finally Tyler popped up his head and he looked at the judge and he said these words, I'm their son and they came for me and God has a plan and I'm gonna trust it. And I told him later that night, that's exactly why we sow truth into our heart so that it's ready in a moment's notice for us right when we need it. It would be a few months later, he would walk into an American junior high in August, not speaking a word of English, afraid out of his mind. And I told him, what do we know for sure to be true? You're our son and we came for you and God is a plan and tomorrow we'll trust it. Later that fall, it was time for us to open up the basics of the gospel. And we were able to say to him, hey, this is the gospel, God has a plan. He had a, he had a son and he sent him for us. We can trust this. And today I can tell you that we still have big feelings sometimes. We still, we still have big feelings of fear or anger or sadness. And, and in the midst of those big feelings, we still remind ourselves of the things we know for sure to be true. We think sometimes in Christianity, we have to have this giant faith that we can apply on all circumstances to all people and all things going on in our life. But I actually think that's how God gives us truth, just little bites at a time, truths that sustain us for the next step we have to take. In 2010, Todd and I had a chance to travel to Israel for the first time and we were watching the shepherd. He was, had his sheep and his goats up on this field grazing. And the first thing I said to everybody was, this shepherd did not pick a very good field because there's not any grass up there. And the guide was like, Beth, look under the rocks. The dew from the morning gets caught underneath the rocks and there are these little, possibly tiny tufts of grass. And then it made sense what the shepherd was doing, he was pointing out those tufts of grass to the sheep who were walking in a straight line. This, that straight line the sheep walk in is the same word we use in Hebrew to describe a path of righteousness. Sheep walk on a path of righteousness in tune to the shepherd's voice who's walking around them, pointing out to them the tufts of grass that maybe they can't see. 
that's underneath the rock waiting to sustain them. And then how long does it take to like chew a couple of tufts of grass, like four steps, and then they're looking for the shepherd to get more, to sustain them in a continual sense. And I looked around to everybody, I'm like, nobody better read to me Psalm 23. Because Psalm 23 sounds like a shepherd leading his sheep to a pasture. There are fields full of waist high alfalfa. But in that imagery I had conjured up in my mind with big green fields that the shepherd would lead me to, I could be independent in those places. I could eat whatever I want, however much I want, whenever I want. And the image I was looking at in Israel was like this sheep looking for a tuft of grass led there by the shepherd, sustaining them for a few steps, then dependent on him again for another tuft of grass and dependent on him again for another tuft of grass. And that rhythm of dependency and listening and sustenance is exactly what God talks about when he says we need to have faith. Truth enough for just what it is that we have next and then dependency on him and a posture of listening on to him. And that's the kind of faith I think sustains us in all the big stories and the big feelings that we have throughout our life. And that is what has carried me through the raising of our family and the engagement in this ministry and the life that we live.